Hey everybody, my name is Matt Yoakum. I am here back again today with Pro Sound Effects to bring you another tutorial. So for today's tutorial, we're gonna be talking about hand-to-hand -hand combat or how to design punches for movies and TV shows. This is gonna be a fun one. Uh, I, I, I've chosen three clips to do three different versions of what punches might sound like or how I might build them in a movie or a TV show and we're gonna go through the different considerations for that. And for that today, we're going to be using the Pro Sound Effects Core 4 Pro Bundle. This is a bundle that contains over 66 libraries, containing over 81,000 files and 330,000 individual sounds across those files. So this is obviously a collection of different libraries that they have catered together into this bundle uh, and there is a wide amount of choices to be had here. So we're gonna uh, dive into Pro Tools fairly quickly here. Um, we're just gonna have fun with it and uh, yeah, let's see, let's see what we can come up with today. All right, so I am here inside of, this is a very simplified uh, version of my effects template. Today I've just got a couple of pre-dubs of effects open um, and we are going to be figuring out how to build uh, a punch, a cinematic, like a combat punch uh, for a movie today. You know, punches in movies and TV shows, uh, and not just punches, but really any kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat, as with most sound design, the job of it is to help us feel the visceral and most importantly, physical connection to the world of the characters and to help us understand the danger that they're in, right? These choices that we make are gonna be heavily influenced by the genre of the clip that we're creating the sound for. Um, so the first one that we're gonna start with here today is we're gonna start by looking at how to build a realistic punch, something that might sound convincing as what you might expect to hear when somebody gets punched in the face in real life. And, you know, there's the, I, I've chosen this clip uh, from this movie called Unbroken, which if you have not seen it, is an incredible World War II story uh, based on a true story. And for a little bit of context for this clip, there's this great scene where we're in this prisoner of war camp and one of the defiant leaders of the American group has been captured um, is forced to stand uh, with his other men lining up to punch him as a form of punishment. It's a pretty brutal scene, but, you know, it falls to us to help make it feel brutal and sad to, to watch these soldiers have to punch their commander by uh, giving us the task of creating a physical sound that sounds realistic. It's not too over the top, um, but is going to help us feel the impact of their hands against the face. Now, obviously, on set during production, these actors have been trained that when they throw a punch, the person who's receiving the punch is going to move in such a way that there's going to be little to no contact between the person throwing the punch and the person receiving the punch. And so our job, there's not, in other words, there's not going to be a whole lot of sound to go off of, if any. And if there is any sound, it's hopefully gonna be minimal and not very useful to us. So it's gonna be up to us to, to create this sound. Uh, so that's what we're gonna dive into doing here first. So um, I typically, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, typically I would reserve, uh, I would put combat sounds, like hand-to-hand -hand combat sounds, either in like my effects B or my effects C pre-dub. Um, it doesn't really matter for this context. Uh, I'm just going to use this topmost pre-dub here, which is effects A, and I'm going to just expand um, some of these tracks so that we can uh, have a bit better of a view as we go through. So, as I mentioned, I'm using Pro Sound Effects' uh, Core 4 Pro library, uh, and because we're going to be starting off by uh, dealing with a realistic punch, um, I am going to type in just, let, let's just go for the most basic search term here first and do punch fight. And let's see what we get. There's the anime library here. Uh, let's go. That's a boxing bag. That, before the... Before the metal sounds uh, in there, if those weren't in there, that, that'd be a really nice sort of natural sounding. These are swishes, which we're not gonna need right now. 
This is a designed impact. Energy. Okay, so these are more realistic, sort of beefy, meaty punches. I like the slap on the top of that one. So I guess it would actually help to watch the clip first, right? So let's go ahead and just watch this very short clip. Uh, we're only going to be doing one of the punches in the scene. Okay, <clears throat> so he hits him in the face pretty good here. Uh, I apologize, by the way. Uh, this uh, These clips were recorded at 60 frames a second, so there is a little bit of uh, blur that you can see here. Like motion blur in between the frames. So this is the frame where he makes impact. You can see he's already pushing his head back there. And by there, his hand is already cleared. So, we're going to use this exact frame. We're going to line up the frame edge. I'm always working in grid mode. I'm going to spot this clip. And then, I, by the way, I think I've shown this in other tutorials, but when you're working in grid mode, you can see how right now it's snapping from grid line to grid line. Let's say I go to place my transient here against this grid, but I really decide that I want it as close up as possible to on this grid line. Right now it's about at half a frame. If, if you're in grid mode, if you hold down the command key, now you're in slip mode temporarily. And alternatively, if you like to work in slip mode, right, where it's like that all the time, you can hold down command and now you're temporarily in grid mode. This is a great trick to know. Uh, I always work in grid mode, so I've constantly just got my finger hovering above the command key here so that I can uh, temporarily go into slip mode. So I'll line up this transient pretty much on the line there. I can do a one frame fade in, it's fine with me. And there is a little bit of sustain. So I will choose to leave in some of that tail because the sustain is what's gonna make it feel like it's got a little bit of weight. And I might even use a bit of clip gain to bump up that tail. Okay, so that's a good top end element. Uh, obviously one of the things that we're going to want to uh, think about when we're doing these different uh, punches is depending on the genre of the piece is going to help determine how much of the speak uh, the frequency spectrum we're going to want to fill out. Because this is a realistic punch, I'm still going to want to cover a significant portion of the, the frequency range, especially depending on how hard I want this hit to feel. Uh, mostly having to do with how much low end versus top end we bring in. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to try to build this out in layers from top to bottom so that we have sort of like some high elements, some mid elements, and then some low elements. Uh, and then we can sweeten with other things uh, in between. But let's start by doing that. Uh, one thing that I want to always avoid doing when I'm creating punches and something that I've... Uh, I have definitely done in the past, especially when I was just getting started, and something I've had other editors turn into me, will be a punch where like, let's say it's six layers deep, three of those layers might be occupying like nearly identical sets of the frequency spectrum. And I would rather choose one good sound to fit in sort of each slot in the frequency like band that it's occupying, as opposed to like layering in three that are occupying more or less the same space. Because sometimes uh, less is more, and you want to have more focus in each of your elements as opposed to just piling on uh, lots of layers of similar sounding stuff. It'll tend to just make things sound sort of um, muddy and undefined. I always want to try to retain definition and fidelity in the layers that and uh, how I'm choosing to stack them. So right now we have a high element, which is pretty good. And then let's see what else. So now I want like a medium to low. That's this one here actually. So this is another Richard King uh, volume sound. I wonder if I pitch it down a little bit. So this is a good sort of low element and I'm gonna do some signal processing to manipulate this. Edit it some more. So you'll notice too here, I am going to line up the head of the transient because what I don't want is flam. I don't want it to sound like multiple hits. This needs to sound like he's connecting once with one fist to one face. So here's top and low end. Let's hear just the low end solo actually. 
Okay, so it's got some interesting low information. So I can see here in the, in the spectrum, it's actually fairly balanced. Because I've already got a high element, I'm gonna scoop down, uh, some like on a, this high shelf here, I'm gonna scoop down some of the higher uh, tones in it. So now it's more of a thud, but that's okay. I like the sound of that. So there's both of them together. So let's just mute this bottom one. Okay, and then add the bottom layer back in. So it's definitely adding that lower part of the frequency spectrum. Okay, that's a huge hit. So this doesn't sound nearly as realistic. So let's do body hit, meaty thud. This is sort of more of a medium, uh, like a mid-tone. Okay, those are wet and goopy. There's some mid-tone and low in there. These are more distorted. That's a nice clean, so this is a boxing glove hit. So this kind of occupies that meet that mid-range. So it's not super low and it's not, not super high and slappy either. So it's got, so here's our high element, and then our mid element, and then our low element. This low element sounds a little bit weak. Uh, so I'm going to open up, I love Uber Loud. This is a favorite uh, limiter of mine. I just enjoy using it, I like the sound of it. Um, the cool thing is you have this band mode here. Um, you can choose how much sort of saturation or distortion you wanna add in addition to some other parameters up here. Um, so I want this to be sort of mid-rangey and low. So I'm gonna add some lows into it uh, by adjusting these knobs here and auditioning. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit render uh, just because the audition out here, let's see. I'm just gonna hit render because of the way the screen recording is working. Okay. So that gave me a little bit nice of a boost of a low end there. So now that's feeling like already a pretty full punch. If I take off the high end, that feels good too, because you feel the knuckle impact from the mid-range in this one. So maybe I'll take down the high end just a little bit and shorten the sustain on it. I just gotta do my fades. <clears throat> Okay, that feels pretty good to me. That feels like Knuckles impacting. This is the first time, so one of the considerations is that this is the first time uh, that our, our captain here, uh, the leader of the group, is getting punched in the face. So I don't want to add, like, a ton of uh, blood. I don't want to, like, break his cheekbone on the very first hit, right? So I'm not going to hear, like, bones cracking. But what I would do is as the soldiers line up and continue to punch him and more are going to come along later in the scene, uh, every time that I build out, you know, this punch and variations of it, I might start to add more and more like crunchy sounds on top. So maybe, you know, if we were going to pretend like this was the, ten you know, the fifth time that he's getting punched or the tenth time that he's getting punched instead of the first, uh, let's go in here and take a look for sort of a crunchier element. Let's look for punch. Actually, let's just go for bone break. Let's just say, let's just pretend like he's gonna get his nose broken uh, on this punch and still keep it realistic. So here's some gore snaps, but these have a ton of reverb on them, which I'm not interested in because they're outdoors and they're standing in sort of a sand pit area. So there wouldn't be a ton of natural reverb. That's got some nice crunch on the end in our Odyssey uh, collection. Okay, sorry, that's loud, that's huge. Okay, so this is kind of a nice blood spurt element. So if, you know, if after the punch his face turned and we saw some blood coming out of his nose or, you know, around his eyes or wherever he's getting hit, having a little bit of blood squish will help sell that uh, idea that his skin is being split by the impact of this, the weight of this punch. It's 
kind of a nice element too. That's actually a Bengal tire, tiger uh, biting into some chicken bones. Let's just do, um, let's do celery search. Okay, I would buy that as a more realistic element of somebody getting his nose broken. So, here's the thing. These are these sort of longer, gorier elements, right? And you might think, okay, well, like, so how do I line this all up on the transient? The thing about creating these sort of gore sweetener toppers to the stuff is that you actually don't want to layer all of that transient material on top of each other the same way that we did for our punch. Because the thing about the punch is you can think of it as a separate element, um, in fact, you know, they're m most, I would say most people probably don't cut this wide across two pre-dubs, but there could be an argument for saying that, you know, the punch might live down on, uh, on B and the gore might live up on A if that's how we were organizing our tracks, because then, you know, let's say we cut in a bunch of, um, variations where there's gore for, you know, him getting more and more and more. Uh, injured, you know, the mixer might want to, you know, bring the level of this VCA down and then ride it up over time so that the gore gets louder as the punches um, take place. Just as an example, uh, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to keep it all on the same pre-dub. I probably would keep it on the same pre-dub anyhow. Um, but just a consideration, that would be something to ask your mixer and or supervisor for their preference. Um, so let's hear these elements individually. So let's let's get a reminder. Here's our just our punch elements that are soloed. Okay, that's a good sounding punch. Now here's the elements we just chose. That's a good nose break sound. That's a crunchy, wetter bone sound. And that's like a squish. So... Uh, the problem is that if I line up all the transients, the transient here is going to obscure the sound of the bone break because it's usually going to be a fairly loud sound, and so we're not going to have a whole lot of headroom to put a ton more information. So we're going to use time, uh, you know, from left to right here on the timeline to help us sort of scoop it out. And you can actually sort of layer in sounds fairly distant from one another and get away with a lot, and I'll show you what I mean. So I want less of this top squishy one. It's the one where the, the tiger's chewing. Uh, that's good about like that. I've turned it down about 10 dB. The blood spur can come down a little further and I'm placing this further out. And then these uh, are really nice. I'm actually going to uh, limit these to make them louder. So already that's better. Maybe a little low. A little bit of everything, a little bit of saturation. Oops, I want that on continuous file. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so that's a pretty nasty sounding uh, like nose break, jaw break there. So I'm gonna do that so a couple frames after. And the reason is if I expand these so you can see. The transient of this punch is really lasting about two, like one, two, maybe three frames of sustained volume, right? Uh, so I want to make sure that the headroom has started to come down so that there's, you know, space for a new element. Uh, and it's actually going to sound okay to have it sort of spread out across time like this. And it, in fact, it'll, it'll be helpful to do this. So I'm going to bring the size back down on these real quick, just so it's a little more realistic to look at. Get rid of my EQ here. So here they are all together now. All right, so now this element sounding a little loud. I'm gonna bring that down. I'm gonna try muting this one all together. And then I think that's separated a little too much. So I'm gonna try this. Okay, so it sounds a little cartoony, if I'm honest. That's a good, decent nose break. Hmm. Oops. Sounding a little too cartoony for my taste. Let's try to find one other element. 
yeah, it's a better sort of a bone break. And again, let's try it, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple frames after, so that this first transient here is starting uh, two frames after the initial hit. Just gonna take out some of those resonant upper frequencies here. Do this is two separate bands. Okay. Okay, so I brought in this sound, which I like. It's got kind of a white goop. I'm just gonna cut it off with that snap there. I'm interested in the high-end element from it. So, you know, it's kind of just about, you know, just this, what I'm doing right now. It's just about bringing in different sounds, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, all within context and watching it with the image. Okay, I like that one. Try just that one. Okay, so now maybe if we, okay, one last element here, like that, cause I like that kind of bone break quality now. Let's try the blood, uh, let's try blood. I wonder what just the end of this would sound like, the tail of this sound here. Too much, but... Kind of nice. Adds that little spurty element to it. Okay, so, you know, you can see I've laid things out. It's not all, you know, I've kind of stacked them in time. So there's the punch, then there's the bone break, then there's the blood spurt. Uh, and again, kind of pretending like, you know, this is him getting hit, you know, maybe for the 10th time. And then just for the first time, we could mute those elements. And there's a clean punch. Um, one thing that I do like to do... Um, and this is actually a trick from my own library. If I go to, uh, for the Soul Levante thing that I did for Netflix, it is a, it is a short anime film where we did like a proof of concept. Um, I created these sounds that I'm going to bring in here. I'm going to cheat by bringing them in from outside of the Pro Sound Effects collection. Um, but these are actually, uh, you should be able to find them in the Soul Levante uh, demo that you can download from Netflix. It's an Atmos session. Um, in these uh, kick files that I synthesized, I like to layer these in stereo, and it sounds like that. And basically, it's just a big low end kick um, where the interesting thing about low end information is that is omnidirectional. So we can do a trick here where, you know, because all these sounds are mono, if I'm working in a surround environment, uh, this punch sound right here is gonna be coming solely out of the center speaker. Now, if you're working in stereo, this obviously isn't gonna have much as, as much of an effect because you're gonna be using your left and right to create a phantom center, but in most cinematic scenarios, this is gonna be coming out of the center channel only. Uh, and so because low-end informational uh, low-end information is non-directional, I can actually cheat by having them come out of the left and right speakers, which 
our free real estate right now, right? Like all of the headroom is being used up in the center speaker, but it's open in this in the left and right speaker. So if I use this on the left and right like that, and then I play it all together, uh, you can't tell that the low end isn't coming from the center as well, but you get all of the added power. So it's kind of a great way, it's a great option for giving, where like if a director wants a realistic punch like this to sound a little heavier, I give them this low end element in stereo, and it just makes it sound extra beefy and, and painful. So I can uh, mute it, and here it is, right? And then one more with it in. And obviously, I mean, it helps a ton, but obviously I can then just uh, adjust that, you know, if, if the you know director wants it to be like halfway in between that, maybe I bring it down 10 dB. And it's still giving just a little bit more of a subtle uh, lift to the low end. Um, so that's a personal trick of mine that I use all the time uh, to take advantage of sort of the physics of asking, you know, one speaker to produce all of that information at once by spreading it out. Uh, between the front three speakers and nobody would be the wiser uh, because of the physics of the sound and how low end is non-directional. So just a good pro tip for you there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I sat, I think this satisfies, uh, you know, what I would want for a realistic punch. So if I wanted to create variations of this, then I would just go into each one of these files uh, pull out the handles on it, and then I would use these as the variations, and so maybe I'm going to use my SoundFlow macro shortcut to create different clips here out of these. Um, so now, you know, I've got all of these files here that I can then go ahead and, you know, grab different uh, variations of different clips here. Right, and so... Say one, 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 and I would, same thing, I would go in, I would line up all of these transients for the variations. I would obviously be listening to them as I went, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just sort of doing a speed version here. So like now I've got three different variations, right? But I'm using the same elements so that they're similar sounding, and if I needed to duplicate a couple of these, it's okay, because they're layered in with the other sounds, and then, you know, same thing, I would do this for each layer and create a bunch of different sounds that then sound homogenous because they're all being used from similar recordings to go through and, and line all that up and create variations for the film. So, let's move on to our next clip. <clears throat> now, this is a lot of fun. Uh, this is a clip of Thanos from the Marvel Cinematic Universe fighting uh, Hulk here. I believe this is an uh, endgame. It honestly might be Infinity War. Uh, Sorry for not having the title handy here, but it's one of those two. Uh, it's a great fight scene of uh, these two mega giant. This is this is kind of the perfect example of a superhero punch, right? Like both like Thanos, I think in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is something like eight feet tall, and he probably weighs like a thousand pounds or something like that. And the Hulk is basically his equal. They're one on one here. So they do actually this really long extended uh, hand to hand combat scene here. But I've just chosen. This one punch here where Thanos goes and punches him right here in the back is kind of a perfect, like, titan landing a punch. And so we want this thing not to sound realistic, but superhuman. This thing needs to sound like, you know, the Hulk is getting a freight train uh, to his lower back here. Uh, and should be uh, waking up sore the next day. So, um... I'm actually still going to bring in my little sub element here because it's going to work great for adding some low end <laughs> punch. So I'll just start with that and then I'll go back to the uh, core four uh, database here. Okay, and so then we're going to go back again to put in punch. I'm going to put fight. And let's uh, revisit some of these. So lots of whooshes again. Let's let's revisit some of these. So those are obviously going to sound more realistic against chicken. These I can tell by the waveform have you know some some distortion or some compression on them. So let's take a listen. I think this first one might be D. 
decent. Um, this might be the sort of thing where, this is where it gets interesting in terms of cutting in mono versus stereo. Because you have to imagine, and this is something I have to remind editors of sometimes, sound editors, is when they're working. You know, we're working here on a small screen or maybe with a small TV up in front of you. Um, you've got this image, and it only appears like a few inches wide in front of you, right? Even though we know that these are these huge characters exchanging blows, uh, you know, we're still sort of tricked in our mind by uh, working on smaller screens. But what you have to imagine is then that this is really being created for a theatrical experience. So this, um, you know, fight is not going to be taking place on a 55-inch TV in front of you or even in front of a screen uh, if you have like a second monitor beside you. It's going to be made for a 35 or 40-foot screen. And you have to picture, you know, if this right here, just this little square where this impact is happening is probably what, like 20% of the frame, right? This is a huge fist in a big room, and so we don't have to cut just mono out of the center. There is some flexibility here where if you're cutting in surround, maybe to not bring it all the way to the center, but to give it a little bit of stereo width so it sounds a little larger than life. Um, the sound was pretty compressed, so I'm going to whoops, turn it down with clip gain. Okay. So there's one uh, frequency element in there I'm not a huge fan of. I'm gonna do this in preview mode. It's that right there. It's kind of a harsh sound and it makes it sound slightly cartoony. So I'm just gonna bring that bit down. That sounds better to me. Perfect. And it's got a huge low end bump, which honestly, may render my thing not as useful. Although what we could do is this doesn't, this file doesn't have as strong of a transient because it was run through distortion or heavy compression. What that does is it actually flattens the signal to make it longer, to have more sustain. It makes the quieter elements louder, but it also tends to take transients and squash them down. So you don't have as much of an impact. You have more sustain. So when that happens, uh, what I like to do is because this is has a strong transient element in it is I can have the transient from here trade off into the sustain from here. So I can do that by fading up and creating a curve here where there's very little volume coming from this punch until this transient starts to run down and then this picks up the rest of the energy. This is a really important sort of concept to get a grasp of when you're shaping sound design for tons of different elements. This goes for weapons and like magic sound design as well is learning to separate transient versus sustained elements and how to sort of weave them in and out of each other. So in this case, I'm taking the transient from the kick and then the sustain from this punch. And so when I play them together like this, you get sort of the best of both worlds, except now it sounds like a double hit. So I wonder if I turn this off. That sounds more like a Let's see, what might I do here? So maybe I do a slightly longer fade, take off a bit of the head and make it not. Hmm. It's interesting. So this sound itself, now that I'm listening to it, has kind of a double hit in it. So I'm actually going to take off the first head and just go for the second hit. Yeah, I don't really want the, the double transient thing. Take a look at some other sounds. You can always bring something onto your timeline that you think is gonna be cool and then change your mind. It's all good. So this is fun. This is kind of that classic 
a older school like tape sound where it's got more sustain. Using uber loud there to pump it up even more and then I'm going to scrape off some of the high end hiss. Something like that. And then there's, again, a lot of that information I'm not a huge fan of. I'll take it way down with EQ. That's the other thing is even though I'm an editor, I am using EQ uh, in, in, you know, in this instance, in this hypothetical scenario, I'm the editor here creating the sound design punch. I'm using EQ to help shape how I want this to be. And I'm, I'm again, I'm lining up those transients. I'm being very sort of specific about it. But yeah, I'm going to shape the frequency spectrum of this so it all works together. Okay, so I have the impact. This is sounding very stereo wide, so I need to bring this back in again. A little too stereo wide. It's more centered, that's good. Yeah, and then with this transient under here, that's feeling nice. Okay, so this is sort of the idea I was going for before, where I've got the big transient here, and then I'm scooping up into the sustain sound here. Now let's go for a little bit more of a traditional sound. So we can get that skin on skin contact. Okay, so this is a bit of a noisy recording, but it's okay because I really like the quality and we can easily just, because this is going to be a very transient sound, we can just duck in and out and you won't notice. So again, I put my transient right here on the line. Create my fades. So this has some of that high end. So the reason I'm running all of this through limiting is that again, limiting is going to help uh, create that sustain for me a little bit. It's also just going to help everything be a bit louder and punch through the mix a little more. The one thing that you do have to be careful of is that if you run limiting on everything, limiting by design is intended to get things closer to zero, digital zero, right? To make them louder. So what that means is you are taking away headroom. So if I layer five things that have all been limited to zero, well, the sum of the five of those is going to be greater than zero and you're going to start getting into digital uh, compression uh, on your outputs uh, or your other limiters that you've got sitting on your master outs uh, and so it can create sort of a squashed sound that actually ends up sounding less full in the end and that's sort of an important thing to understand as well as your dynamics and your gain staging here so you know I can limit this sound this high frequency sound and then actually bring it down so that that digital zero now is something closer to like maybe minus five or minus six, but I'm still getting the sustain of uh, that high end so I can feel it in the punch in the, in the mix. Okay. Uh, so obviously here I'm choosing sounds that are bigger, fatter, have more weight that sound, you know, this would, you would never believe that this was a realistic punch because of the amount of low end information that's here and because of how long the sustain is. A, a normal human punch tends to sound like the transient of that tends to sound like one or two, maybe three frames long. This, as you can see, is sustaining all the way out. I mean, this is like, this is 20, let's see 26 frames here so in uh if the if we were working at 24 this would be something like more like 12 frames uh and that is like half a second long as opposed to like one frame which is just a few millisecs 42 milliseconds when you're running at 24 fps so much longer sustain, a lot more low end, a lot more power uh, is sort of invoked through that. And if I were working in 5.1 and I had Thanos punch Thor in the back, you better believe I would be throwing it to the LFE as well. You won't be able to hear it in this stereo mix here, but if I throw it on, 
you know, that starts to engage my subwoofer and suddenly there's a whole extra octave of low information coming at me that's bolstered. And it's just going to feel like a huge punch in, in a theater. Um, that weight of that subwoofer kicking in is really going to be impactful. Um, I also just wanted to, for fun, look at the Colossal Library and put punch to see... Okay, so I know uh, here that, that uh, Joseph Raoli and Randy Torres created some massive, huge sounds. They're using compression and distortion to their advantage to create these cinematic hits. And you can just hear how huge they sound. And again, that gives the impression of weight and power for our superhero punch. That's got like a metallic element. I'm just gonna do Colossal Impact. Dude, those are huge. Let's do Monster Stomp. You know, that's a really great metallic element in there. You know, like I could see a scenario where like if Thor's hammer were being used here, or even the, the you could argue that the, the, the metal of the gauntlet here as Thanos strikes uh, the Hulk, you might want to hear some of the armor. Um, that's one thing that, you know, we didn't cover here was sort of like, you know, if you've got like an armored character, you would want to add in uh, the metal element as well the, uh, in the high end. So I'm going to listen to this. That's huge. I'm going to turn it down. So that sustain is pretty long. And if I open up the EQ, I'm only sort of interested in this uh, metallic element here. So I'm actually just going to emphasize a few of these frequencies. Uh, and it sounds thin and wimpy when I, when I uh, do the high pass filter like this, right? But if we remember the entire point here um, if I'm doing good organization, I'll layer this low to high, uh, is that uh, I've already got the mid and low in information covered here. I'm just interested in the high. So even though it sounds bad in a vacuum, as soon as I turn on all the other elements, now it, it sounds fine. I'm not missing that power. So that's kind of fun. You know, that's kind of a fun, uh, just metal impromptu thing here, uh, for Thanos' glove. That's kind of a, a fun one, too. Yeah, so these sounds obviously are meant to be more uh, cinematic and less for combat, but still just fun to uh, check out some other sort of bigger synthesized distorted elements. Uh, distortion, again, is, is your friend here for creating sounds that sound bigger. Um, Decapitator from Sound Toys is another really great distortion that I enjoy. Uh, you can run it in through drive. And you see, it kind of takes away the transient, but it creates more sustain and more crunch. So, you know, you can see physically what's happening to the, to the waveform there. If I duplicate this, sorry, up, not over. If I process this bottom one, you can see the difference in the shape here, right? Like this, this is what's going on. Uh, we have this peak and then this valley, especially if I turn off this original clip gain here, you know, you have the transient that then lowers into a, like a sustained tail sort of decay. Uh, but when you run and process everything through distortion, it's taking the quieter segment here and making it louder. You can see the waveform here is nearly as loud until about this point as the very beginning. And so it's reducing the transient, bringing up the low, and that's why sometimes it may even be nice to like keep the original, use the head, the transient information on the original, and use the distorted, longer sustained tail of the processed version and trade off between the two by using fades. And it's kind of just a smart way to do uh, some layering here. So I'll play just these two elements. Right, so it was just this. And then there's this added low end down here after I've processed this file with Decapitator. 
So if I do something like this, this is what we get. Oh, it helps to turn off the capitator so you can see the image too. But you mostly focusing on the sound here, obviously. Just mute that. Uh, oops. Yeah, so that's a lot of fun. I think it's fun. I, I would probably spend more time on the gauntlet. Obviously, that would have that would be like a signature sound where you could tell that it was his armor every time he was hitting. But just for the sake of the demo, it's in there. So that's pretty fun. Now, the last and a really fun category of punch here, uh, you know, I couldn't help myself uh, when I was looking for doing more of like a, a stylized cartoon and or anime punch, uh, you know, ha had to go to the, the OG and uh, pick a Dragon Ball Z clip here. So this is Goku after he's just turned Super Saiyan for the first time. He's going to deliver a pretty devastating blow to Frieza here. And I love just the, the imagery in this. So he actually, for sake of lining up our punch, there's this flash. And then it literally goes from here to show the speed to the next frame as his fist is already in Frieza's stomach. So I'm going to line up the transient uh, to be right here with the first frame, the first time that we see this punch land. And let's... Uh, Choose some more sounds. So actually, this this is very similar in line to how I would have I would do. Whoops, very similar in line to how I would do a superhero punch, except that with anime and animation, uh, you can have a whole lot more fun and go way more stylized, even than like you know the Avengers type style punch. Uh, so let's start off with a realistic punch. Let's just do punch big, maybe. No, actually, let's not even go for a realistic punch here. Let's go for explosion. Because, you know, uh, Goku punching you in the stomach like that. I'm going to come back to the anime sounds later, so I'm not going to uh, go on those just yet. I'm going to bring in some more stylized sounds at the end. It's a really fun sound. Maybe not for this, but it's just a fun sound in general. I love, this is one of the things I love about working with a large general library and especially a bundle like the Core 4 Pro here is sometimes you just have these happy accidents where you're trying to find something and you come across a really cool uh, version of something to note down mentally for later. I really like that sound too. It's cool. So this is from uh, Dark Matter here. I'm going to uh, bring this in in stereo because it has kind of that nice... It's got some high and some low transient information. Yeah. Okay, so I'm actually going to let that thing sustain for quite a long time. It's nice because you can see, you see the shock waves happen and then they don't disappear until about here. So the fact that this sound sustains for a really long time is actually to our benefit because it adds to the stylization of what's going on as well as matching the visual. <laughs> I mean, that's just a great sound. <laughs> okay, so the military blast here, I've got my leg picker here for in sound minor. That's awesome. It's because, you know, getting hit by a Super Saiyan, I imagine, would feel akin to getting hit by an explosion. And, again, it's going to be giving us that sustain. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to turn that way down and let's try just to see what other uh, distortions we've got. Let's see if we go into uh, maybe harmonic. So let's go for Devil Lock Deluxe. This is another sound toy plugin. This is just an absolutely insane distortion plugin. I'm going to turn it way down because, uh, you know, even just a little bit of this tends to make things very loud. So I'm going to do some crushing and some crunching. Uh, I'm going to leave darkness at zero because I don't want to uh, get rid of all my top end. You can just turn it all the way up and it just gives you like amazing distortion. 
I probably don't need that much for this, but look, if we start at zero and then just slowly turn these dials up until we get, I'm gonna just mess with them until I get about something that I like. So even just a touch of that crush setting. I mean, that's just kind of amazing. This is just uh, great for this kind of stuff. Highly recommend. And look how huge it makes this waveform. I mean, that's, <laughs> it just turns, uh, you know, an impact into an absolute dynamic tube where it's gonna last all the way through to the end here. So I'm gonna turn that back down to allow some headroom because remember all these elements have to coexist. So I don't, if you have them all at zero, you'll just end up getting a squashed, uh, you know, muddy sound, which is not what we want at all. So if I play both of these now, it's still huge. I'm gonna turn that down like 10 more. So here's the bottom sound and then the top sound. Probably go down another 10. Okay, maybe let's bring us to like t minus 20. Okay, so I want to, I love the low end in this guy. I'm not super crazy about the first transient here. It's a little high, almost like a little snare drummy. So I'm gonna just keep the tail here. Now remember this fire, this file can be louder cause it's not distorted. So the perceived loudness is gonna be less on the bottom file. Okay, that's really cool. Let's find a different uh, impact sort of transient event. Let's go synthesize sounds. That's fun, because it's actually, I don't know if you can hear that, it's got a high-end metallic ring and they're a little sort of like a metallic thing up top, which is kind of fun. That's actually kind of an interesting thing about anime is they'll have these metallic tones. Okay, so. Probably gonna use less of that tail because I've already got sustain from the others. Okay, that's a really fun, like, explosive hit sound here. And we're not using any realistic fight sounds here at all. I mean, I'm using literal explosions and hugely distorted impacts. But that's what kind of an anime fight calls for. Um, now, the one thing that I'm gonna have fun with here is to come up with an anime sound. Let's go impact again and find just a fun thing. That's kind of perfect out of the gate already, just like first try here. Uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, and because it's sort of this like almost slow-mo moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, first of all, turn this way down because it's distorted already. And then run it through some reverb. Maybe set that mix at like just just under 50%. So it's mostly the dry signal with a little bit of reverb to hang around. That's really fun because the ba wing happens right with the uh, expanding uh, shock waves here. Let's just take a listen to some more because that was lucky that I landed on that first try and also there's just a bunch of amazing sounds in this library. But uh, let's listen to some others. It's a great punch. Man, there's some great punches in here. Even for the superhero fight, uh, there'd been some good options in here. Just listen to some other anime sounds in here for fun. That's kind of fun. So it's kind of like a variation on that guy. So I'm actually gonna, you'll notice all of these are in stereo so far. 
is totally fine with me. I could always mono up anyone that I choose to just with the panner. Notice I'm turning these way down just because they're already distorted and sort of high volume. I really love that. So then, like, I would probably process the back half of this with reverb. And then crossfade into it. Something like that. And that is the beauty of anime, is you can add these really fun, unrealistic tonal elements. That's a great sound too, like put that at the head. Make sure these transients are lined up. I'm a stickler for that. Turn this guy way down. Yeah, that's just so much fun. Oops. All right, I mean, so there you have it. I mean, those are three totally different stylized examples. In fact, let's just play through them all one more time. Here's the dry, realistic hit. Right, feels real. Going back, listening to it, could probably use a little more high end, slightly less low mid. Uh, and then our superhero punch over here. It's fun, probably without the uh, metal element here. It's, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's really fun. Just a huge hit to the back. That's better with the, the metal sound just a little lower. And then our anime punch. So all of them are trying to convey, this is the important part. All of the, all of these are trying to convey a real physical world where the characters are enduring these punches where our protagonist or the villain or whoever it is that's getting punched is suffering the consequences of physical contact with power behind it whether that's real a superhero or you know whatever you would you know a super saiyan uh you know the genre irrespective of the genre we want to create something where it feels like our characters are in danger or are the ones doling out the punishment. Uh, and so it takes layering, paying attention to the frequency spectrum, making sure that we have high, mid, and low elements and that we're not just repeating elements that sound very similar over and over again and stacking them. Uh, we want to make sure that we're being conscious of our headroom, making sure that if everything is at zero and we're playing it that way, understanding that, that sound is going to get squashed. Um, but then at the same time, understanding that we can use tools like distortion and limiting to intentionally squash sounds and then to bring that volume down in order to create more sustain and therefore a feeling of power. Uh, but, you know, all of these elements have to work in harmony. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's going to help to help us feel empathy or pain or whatever it is that the characters are experiencing and whatever the director it is. Uh, wants us to feel during that scene. So there you have it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you have any other questions about punches or maybe things I didn't cover. There's certainly a lot more to get into. Uh, and again, a lot of these design principles uh, remain the same whether we're talking about punches or kicks or headbutts or any sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Even weapons, a lot of this is very similar to like how I would approach a weapon design, thinking about frequency layers uh, and time. Um, so just let us know if there's uh, anything that you'd like to, for us to cover in the future. Again, today I was using the Pro Sound Effects Core 4 Pro Bundle, which comes with over 66 individual libraries, general and uh, specialized specific libraries. So be sure to give that a check out on their website. Having a large general library or disposal makes editing projects like these a breeze. So check them out. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Pro Sound Effects channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.